the first week of 2017 is going well for you. Um, I had a really, really nice New Year's celebration with right here at my house with my family and some of my best friends. And we had a lot of great food. We talked and laughed a lot. We really enjoy each other's company. And we also watched some of the festivities on TV. So I hope your New Year was also wonderful. And today I want to talk about the future because at the beginning of a new year, a lot of people start making statements about the future, what is going to happen um, in the upcoming year. And I wanted to clear up some confusion about the different ways to talk about the future in English, okay? Um, so English has a number of different ways to talk about the future. We can use will and won't. We can say going to. We can even use the present continuous. So today I'm going to explain all of that to you with some really concrete examples. And I would also like to ask you to practice. So as I'm going through these examples and teaching you how to talk about the future in English, try to practice by writing your own examples examples. Just write a comment um, under this video, okay? So let's get started. So the first uh, thing that you can do when talking about the future is to talk about your intentions, what you intend to do, what you want to do. And when talking about intentions, we use going to. So for example, you might say, this year I'm going to read more books, or this year I'm going to lose weight. Or maybe this year I'm going to quit smoking, okay? Remember that in fast spoken English, going to often sounds like gonna. So if I were to say those sentences fast, I would say them like this. This year I'm gonna read more. This year I'm gonna lose weight. This year I'm gonna quit smoking. So you'll notice that these are all intentions. There are things that I have in my mind that I want to do um, but they're really things that are in the future that are not really confirmed plans. So for confirmed plans, or some people call these arrangements, which are definitely going to happen, then we have two options. We can use the present continuous, so that's with ing, or we can use going to. Let me give you some examples of confirmed plans. So let's say... Uh, I'm planning on taking a cruise in the month of July. And I've already bought the tickets and I've already put it on my calendar, so it's definitely going to happen. So I can use the present continuous to talk about the future when I have confirmed plans. I can say, I'm taking a cruise in July. Okay, I'm taking, that's present continuous, but I'm talking about the future. I'm taking a cruise in July. So that part in July makes it clear that this is a confirmed plan in the future. When talking about confirmed plans using the present continuous, we usually add that future date, say in July, because if I just say I'm taking a cruise, then maybe it sounds like I'm taking a cruise right now, right? Because that's how we usually use the present continuous. But in this case, talking about confirmed plans in the future, we say, I'm taking a cruise in July. Or for a confirmed plan that's maybe closer to the present, we can say, I'm seeing a show in New York next week. So again, this is confirmed. I am definitely going. I have it on my calendar. I probably have the tickets already. And I use the present continuous for talking about the future. I'm seeing a show in New York next week. Now, we can also use going to for confirmed plans, okay? So it's also possible to say, I'm going to take a cruise in July, or gonna. I'm gonna take a cruise in July, or I'm going to see a show in New York next week, or I'm gonna see a show in New York next week. Okay, so both of these, the present continuous with ing and going to, both of them are perfectly correct for talking about confirmed plans. Okay, are you practicing yet? I'd like you to write in the comments one intention you have for this year, like 
Uh, I'm going to study English more in 2017. And then one confirmed plan you have, like uh, I'm seeing a show next week. Try to use the present continuous for talking about the future. All right, so remember, always put what you're learning into practice as soon as possible. So let's try to do that in this video. The next way to talk about the future is by making predictions, okay? So predictions are just imaginings about the future. You are thinking about how you imagine the future will be. So these have to do more with you, more with your intentions and your plans. Predictions are a little more general. And at the beginning of the year, you'll see a lot of predictions in newspapers. For example, um, this year the economy will grow or the economy won't grow. So for predictions, we often use will and won't. Will being the positive form and won't is short for will not. That's the negative form. The economy will grow this year. The economy won't grow this year. Uh, the new president will do this. The new president won't do that. Okay. And we can also use going to for predictions. So it's perfectly correct to say the economy is going to grow this year, or the economy is not going to grow this year. The new president is going to pass a new law, or the new president is not going to pass a new law. Okay? Some people say that going to has more certainty than will and won't. Mm, I don't know, maybe. I don't think that's really the case. I think you can use both of these equally for uh, predictions, and you can quantify the amount of certainty by using words like definitely. The economy will definitely grow this year, or the economy definitely won't grow this year, okay? Or the economy is definitely going to grow. The economy is definitely not going to grow. Okay, so I would use a word like definitely to emphasize it if you are very certain that your prediction will come true. Or you can use a word like probably to show that it's likely but it's not completely certain. All right, um, and if you're a little more uncertain, then you can use the word maybe, right? Maybe the economy will grow this year. Uh, or maybe the economy is going to grow this year. All right, so there are different degrees of certainty in predictions, but I would use the words maybe, probably, and definitely to indicate those different degrees of certainty. But you can use both will and won't and going to or not going to to make predictions. So let's see you put it into practice. Make uh, one or two predictions for what you think is going to happen in 2017 and write them in the comments. So you might be wondering, when are some other situations where we use will and won't? Well, we often use will and won't for promises and decisions that are made in the moment of speaking. So an example of a promise would be, let's say I have children and my children really want to go to Disney World. I might say, I'll take you to Disney World this year. Okay, that's a promise. I'll take you to Disney World this year. Or, um, I don't know, maybe your boyfriend or girlfriend is complaining that you're working too much, so maybe you make a promise with won't. I won't work so much this year. Okay, again, that's a promise. You could also phrase that as an intention. You could also say, I'm not going to work so much this year. That would also be okay. So you can see that there is some overlap between these categories. Sometimes more than one option is correct. Let's talk about decisions you make in the moment, okay? So a decision, an example of a decision in the moment would be, let's say your friend says, hey, I have tickets to this really great concert um, and it's gonna be so much fun and you get interested in going to the concert too. So in that conversation you say, oh, I'll buy some tickets too. All right, you weren't planning on it before or you weren't thinking about going to the concert before, but when your friend mentioned it, then you decided in that moment that you want to buy tickets too. So in that case, we usually use will and won't. I'll buy some tickets too, okay, for communicating decisions that you make in the moment. So I hope this lesson has helped you understand better how to talk about the future in English, the different ways we have of talking about the future in English. Remember to practice by writing some comments. 
And at the beginning of the year, it's also a great time to make a plan for your English study. I really think that the best students have a plan for their English study, and then they stick to the plan. That means they follow it. They don't just forget about it or abandon it. And if you're looking for some English learning material that can take you through the whole year, then I recommend you look at my complete program at Espresso English because it has more than 400 lessons in it. That means if you did a lesson every day, you would have enough lessons for the whole year and even some extra lessons. The courses and ebooks inside the complete program cover a lot of different areas. So there's business English, there's speaking, listening, pronunciation, grammar, vocabulary, confusing words. You'll really cover all the different areas of the language. And that's also really important for you to become a well rounded English speaker. That means someone who can, um, who is good at all the different areas of English, right? Because you don't just want to be good at listening but bad at speaking or good at grammar but you don't have much vocabulary. You really want to get all of the areas of the language. That's what makes a fluent English speaker. So my Complete English uh, program can help you do that. If you'd like more information, just click on the link uh, under this video or visit EspressoEnglish.net. Uh, click on Courses and then look for the Complete program. And There's actually a 35% discount that's available on this program, so you'll save money too. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to teach you a lot more English in 2017. Bye for now.